In this video, I'm going to discuss constructors in Java. I'll start with an overview, and then we'll jump right into an example. So first of all, what are constructors? Well, they are invoked when an object is instantiated from a class. In other words, when we create an object from a class. And this often happens when we are assigning it to a variable. Important note, constructors should only contain initialization information. It's our first step into the front door of an object, and it's tempting to put a whole bunch of stuff in there, but it really should focus on just the initialization of anything that's required for that object. And many times we find there's no initialization needed, so we don't even need anything beyond the default constructor. So a constructor is a lot like a method, where it typically has a signature and it can accept parameters. The one, a couple big differences between a method and a constructor. A method typically can have just about any name provided that we follow the naming guidelines. But for a constructor, the name of the constructor is the same as the name of the class itself. Also, a constructor does not have a, a return type stated in the signature because it's a given that when you call a constructor, you're going to get an object of that class back. So uh, not needed there. So you'll typically have the word public, although it doesn't have to be public. But we have the word public, and then the name of the class, and then an open and closed paren, and then open curly, close curly. And between the parens, you can have any parameters that you'd like to require into that constructor. So just like a method, a constructor can have parameters that get passed in. With a couple of footnotes, you want to be cautious not to add too many parameters to a constructor. Sometimes I'll see a class, like uh, say a class named person, that might have 16 attributes, and then someone will make a constructor with all 16 attributes in the signature. Well, the trick is that means that you're obligated to pass in 16 values when you construct that object, which can be cumbersome because maybe they're not all required. Now, incidentally, in a sibling language to Java in Kotlin, you can actually define a, a default values for each of those parameters that thus makes them optional, which is kind of neat. You could have a constructor with 16 parameters in Kotlin and only pass in three values and it would still work. Uh, but that's not the case in Java, at least not today. So we want to be careful there. I only recommend passing in parameters if they are absolutely required to initialize your object. Uh, if not, I would just go with the default, which is no arguments. That's a lot easier for things like dependency injection frameworks, which we'll get to probably not in this class, but uh, several lectures down the way in, in another module. Uh, so with dependency injection, you just declare a variable and there's essentially an engine in the background that will fill it with an object, but that's a discussion for a later day. And that's a lot easier to do if we have a no-param constructor. So let's take a look at some constructors in our project. Uh, if we take a look here at the main class that we made before with a main method, you'll notice line number 18. Look very closely at this. So first of all, we know that equals is assignment, which means do what is on the right, take the result, and assign it to what's on the left. So on the left, we have a variable declared. The variable name is my vehicle, and the variable type is vehicle. This is very similar to variable declarations we've seen before, where we might have int odometer, where the name is odometer, the type is int, or double gallons of gas. The name is gallons of gas, the type is double. Those are what we call primitive types, int double, uh, car, float, long, byte, because we're mapping directly to zeros and ones on the computer. But one of the advantages of object-oriented programming is that we can deal with more complex types that aren't just primitives. And that's essentially what classes are. Classes are not just one variable that's taking up space and memory, but it's a collection of related variables and related types. And so we come up with a class which is a more complex type than those primitive types. But we can still use a class as a variable type itself. So when you see declaring a variable with a name and type, we can do that with a class just like we do with the primitive. The only difference is with a class, we typically have to construct an object out of it. And when we invoke a constructor, we'll use the keyword new, and then we'll call the constructor itself. So if I control click in the vehicle, what's funny is we it just takes us to this class called vehicle, and that's fine because what we had there was the default constructor. So the default constructor is when we don't pass in any parameters. And if I come over here to vehicle, 
we see that I've not defined a constructor, so the Java compiler just essentially gives me that constructor for free. Now, I could define it if I want, just like this. And see, that's essentially what I get for free from the Java programming language. So I could just do something silly here, like a line where I can at least set a breakpoint. So let me set a breakpoint there, and then let's debug through this and watch as this breakpoint gets hit. I'm running the program, and we see it stops on my first breakpoint in main, so I'm going to choose step over, which means simply execute this line and move to the next line. Now it's going to show a J option pane. This can get a little tricky with the debugger because the focus goes back to the IDE, so you don't always see the window, uh, the window pop up, but in this case, we're lucky, we saw it pop up. So we'll say my truck. Now, uh, we see that that my truck value gets stored in the nickname variable that we've declared here, and now I'll take a look at this. We are on the constructor call for vehicle. I have one of two options here. I can step over, in which case it's going to execute this line, but it's going to notice there's a breakpoint on the vehicle constructor and it's going to stop us there. Or I can step into, which is where I say I have a constructor call or a method call, and I want to step in and see what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and choose step into. And take a look, does this look familiar? This is the constructor that we just called. Uh, so it's going to go through and you notice it initializes our attributes that we created earlier and then it just went in and it ran this line and we can see that sure enough i has the value of two so with this i'm going to say okay thank you very much and i'm going to tell it uh, to continue now watch something funny here you notice if i go back to the main class you notice everything looks good right now but if i go forward and i add a parameter to this constructor say int foo just some kind of silly parameter uh, now I'm going to go back to the main class, and you'll notice that the vehicle instantiation here now does not compile. And the reason is I get that no argument constructor by default if I don't create a constructor of my own. But once I define a constructor, I no longer get that default constructor. So be careful there. As soon as you add a parameter to a constructor, if you do not have a noarg constructor, and you're trying to call a noarg constructor, uh, the compilation is going to fail. So a couple ways that we can fix this. Uh, one is we can go back to that vehicle type and we could remove that parameter. The other thing is we are allowed to have multiple constructors. So I could do one that does not have an argument and one that does have an argument. And that will work. And as soon as I go backwards, we'll see that we compile again. So that's a look at constructors. Now, one trick here is we also don't want to have a lot of bloated code or code that's not used. So while this might be a good demo, I'm actually not going to commit this one. I'm going to revert these changes because I haven't added anything here that actually adds to the program. And the more lines of code that we have, the more we have to maintain. It's like living in a big house versus an apartment. The more house you have to clean, the longer it takes to clean. The smaller apartment you have, the less time it takes to clean. So this has been a look at constructors. And as always, I hope this video was helpful. And I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.